we are making the chain links. So for this step, you're going to need a chain tool, the included Allen key for the chain tool, chain that is going to be longer than the length that you're going to be breaking. So for in this segment, we're going to need something longer than 56 links of chain. I also like to have a paint pen or a silver sharpie or something along those lines to be able to mark the bushing and pin that we need to push through on the chain just to make it easier for when you're using the chain tool. It is also helpful to have something as a measuring device. So this mat that we have here, each one of these squares is about an inch and so we'll be able to measure our chain through using this mat. So with that, let's start by taking our chain and we need to be able to measure out the length. So for this build, we need to have chain links that are 56 links long. 56 links is approximately 14 inches, um, but it is basically you're going to end up counting 56 individual bushings along the chain itself to be able to get your length that you need. So that is going to end us with this link here. Now when we are going ahead and reforming and breaking chain, we want to pay attention to the end that we have um, already broken so that we're able to connect the correct link on. So this is an inside link, so we need an outside link to be able to connect to it. So with that, we're going to look back at the link that we need to break on, and then that means that we're going to need to push through this pin so that this link is exposed, and then we're able to connect that back. So with this link, we're going to go ahead and take our paint pen, and we are going to mark the pin of that link. This way we know that we need to break the white pin through on our chain tool when we do this later. From there we're going to take our chain tool itself. We want to make sure that there is no interference in the guide here. So we're going to pull back our set screws here a little bit to make it where we're able to easily put the chain in place. Since we're going to be reseating the pin on the chain, you want to keep the screw down here screwed in and as close to the body of the chain tool as you can get it. So from there, we're going to go back and find our pin that we wanted to break, and we're going to take that pin and align it up to the hole that is with our chain tool here. Once that's complete, we're going to want to hold the chain in place, so we screw down this segment here to make that nice and snug. Now from here, you're going to take your pin screw and you want to basically Set that through and slowly crank this down. Now this part is going to take a little bit of torque to be able to move the pin through and press it out of the chain itself. Now you want to do this nice and slowly as if you push the pin all the way through, you will not be able to reseat the pin and you'll need to use a master link. So we keep moving that around. Some of this is by touch and feel. All right, so right about here is where we're gonna wanna stop and you're gonna wanna pull, back drive this pin out to see if you've pushed the pin through the one plate, the interior bushing, and into the other plate. So you remove this, and you remove your screw that's also holding it in. And then you want to remove this out of the tool. And you should be able to wiggle this free if it is all the way through. This pin is not all the way through, but this is a good thing. This means that now we're able to go back. We can reset this in. Go ahead and re-tighten down the pin itself. And then slowly realign our pin set screw into the chain itself to then drive that pin the rest of the way through. This may take a few times for you to be able to get it just right where you do not need to use a master link. Once the chain ends up breaking away, you're going to want to remove that chain and push that to the side. Now you have your pin removed and you need to reset the pin. So 
you need to realign these bushings together and end up putting this, seating this back into the chain tool itself. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go back and we're going to want to drive these all the way out of the way. So this cup point screw that we're unscrewing right now, we're going to put the chain link into this guide here to be able to press that pin back into the chain. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start by taking the end that does not have the pin and aligning that in through these two pins that are built into the chain tool to hold it in place. And then you're going to take the rest of your chain and wrap that around to then place these inside of each other. Once those are set, I tend to like to take the pin set screw and just tighten that down just a little bit. Not a ton, just enough for it to be able to make some contact to help hold the chain in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start driving that pin back down and in. It's usually helpful to kind of help to hold the chain while you're doing this process because you need to make sure that those bushing lines are going to be lined up. So once that's done, we can then start to really torque on this to get this pin pushed all the way through. Now, unlike pushing the pin out, pushing the pin in, you don't need to be nearly as careful or worried because it's going to bottom out against the bottom of the tool here. And so you can just keep cranking on this until it feels really, really tight. So now that the pin is completely reseated in, we can end up unscrewing this from the chain tool. Remove it out. Double check to make sure that the pin has been completely seated, doing a little bit of a visual inspection. And then once that is complete, we end up needing to make one more 56 link chain to complete this drivetrain.